Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Studio de Sapo. This morning, I thought it'd be fun to show you how we make our bath bombs. Our bath bombs are super popular and um, they're a lot of fun to make. Um, but before we go through the process of how we make them, for those of you who don't know what a bath bomb is, I thought we'd do a little demo to show you um, a bath, a simulation of a bath bomb in action. No, I'm not going to get into a tub. So here we have a little um, demonstration of our bath bombs in action. Um, I'm using just a smaller version because if I drop one of our eight ounce bath bombs in here, it will just like overflow and be a huge mess. So, but just so you can get the idea of how they work, uh, when you drop them, I've got your, you know, this pretend this is your bathtub and you've got your bath water all ready to go. You drop the bomb into the water and it immediately will start to kind of fizz and foam and fill your bath water with our blend of Epsom salts and our oil blend with the aloe vera and the vitamin E. But yeah, so then that'll keep just kind of foaming in there. But that's that's basically how it works. And um, it's got that nice blend of, of uh, grapeseed, olive oil, and avocado oil in there. The Epsom salt, oh, it just feels great. I could just soak my hands in this all day. <laughs> so, but that's what a bath bomb does. So stay tuned while we uh, switch here and we'll come back. We'll show you how we actually make our wonderful bath bombs. Okay, so we're back and um, um, we've got our mixture here. I'm gonna put it down so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So we basically have um, a dry mix. This is how, we, how it starts. So this is just a mixture of baking soda, citric acid, which the combination of those two um, are what gives us our fizz and foam, and well, our fizz. Our foam comes from the clay and the um, cornstarch that we add to it, which also help keep our, um, give our bar, or give our um, bomb the hardness that we need. And then we also add um, Epsom salt to this. And so then now I'm just kind of mixing up the dry and they don't want any lumps in it, so I just want to make sure this is kind of all mixed up good. And then to this, we're going to add our oil and our scent, our oil mixture and our scent. Now our, our oil mixture, which I've got right here, is a combination, I'm just going to make a little well in here. It's a combination of olive oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, vitamin E, and um, aloe vera. So we mix, we add all that in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our scent in. So today I'm making our ginger lemongrass bath bombs. So um, I've got our lemongrass scent here, which I'm gonna add. And then to get the ginger, I'm going to do some salt, some color, some salt, and that's gonna kinda of go in the um, bomb. I'll show you how that how that's done. If you've seen some of our other ones, you know what I'm talking about. So I've got my ginger and I've got a little mica in there, some gold matte mica to give me some color. And then I'm just going to add a little alcohol to this and that will wet it enough so that it will stick to the salt. And then I'm just going to kind of mix this around a little bit. Since it's alcohol, it'll dry super fast, which I need. I, the key to these bath bombs is moisture, the moisture level. So if I get them too wet or if there is too much moisture in the batter, they will not set up. They'll actually start activating and it's a huge mess. So that's kind of what that's going to look like. And then I'm going to uh, mix this then. And I'm just going to start mixing it with my little whisk here, but I'm going to end up having to use my hands. And then the batter itself, the main mix, we're going to color green because it's lemongrass. This is our mixture that we're doing for the green. So I've, it's got a mixture of mica, and I've also added some um, some uh, spirulina powder. So I'm gonna add that. And then I'm gonna put some gloves on so I can mix this by hand. Same. And this took me so long to master this. Um, 
because it's it's truly all about the moisture. So I'm just gonna kind of mix in the color. Now it's still very dry, which is good. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of alcohol um, to the mix. And the reason I use alcohol is because it dries super fast. So some some people use uh, witch hazel. Um, others maybe use a combination of water and alcohol. But I have found that straight alcohol works the best for me. So I'm basically just I I want this to be kind of like wet. Not I don't want to say wet sand, but just like a kind of wet sand. I don't know how to describe it to you. So you kind of want it to still stay together a little bit, but kind of crumble easily at this point. These will sit, once I press them in the molds, these will sit overnight and dry out and by morning they'll be hard as a rock. So as long as I don't get them too wet. So you really, it's really a feel thing. It's just, I don't even know how else I can say it. And it takes lots of trial and error. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Um, and then I'm gonna get my molds ready. So these are our molds and they're just little plastic saucer molds that fit together and these will hold our mix. So since we're putting that, I'm gonna put the salt in the bottom of these. I'm gonna lay these out in these muffin pans so that it just makes it easier. So everything's not rolling around. So this particular batch will make um, four or five, depending on how I measured. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna take this mixture and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit into each mold. So that'll give us our ginger look. And I do this differently all the time, so. But I just, this just kind of came to my mind this morning when I was thinking about making these. So I thought, yeah, I'll try it this way. All right, so we've got that in there. Got a little, oh, it's pretty. All right. It still feels just a bit dry. So, and in the building here too, it's very dry where, you know, our shop is. So, which is good because it helps. When it gets really super humid in the summer, these things are a pain in the butt. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Because I want to kind of allow, because there's still some moisture in these too, so I think this is safe. All right, so I'm just going to take my half and I just put it in here, press it in pretty tight. I leave a little bit on top and I'm just going to force that together real tight. And I don't like to waste, so I'll try and get all the excess off if I can. So that's kind of what it looks like at this point, and then it'll dry overnight and I really like that kind of gold pop on the end there. It looks cool. So we make these probably every day to maybe two or three times a week, depending on what we've got ordered and what part, what time of the season it is. Um, these are super popular with folks. We also have the kids version that we do now too with the surprise toy inside. Um, I just started doing those. We've had lots of people requesting that I had some kind of option for the kids. So we've kind of done that. And we did two sizes because I know not all the parents like the big, huge bombs for the kids. So um, those are available in store. I haven't put them online yet, um, but they'll be in store and then they'll I'll take them to the market this summer too. So you'll be able to get those at your closest farmer's market that we're at. Super excited, farmer's market season will be starting soon. It's a beautiful day today. It's gonna to be pretty warm. So a few more weeks, we'll be into full market season and hoping that this pandemic is behind us and we can go back to some sense of normalcy in our world. All right.
<laughs> so now sometimes, because I don't, I'm not going to probably have enough to do a whole another bath bomb. So what I'll do with the extra is, and this is how we get the smaller little fizzy bath cakes. I'm going to go ahead and put some of that in there. Is I'll just put this in a muffin tin, press it in a tin, and sell that as a smaller option, uh, which has been pretty popular too. And these work just as well as they're just a smaller, smaller version. So, all right. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, these are easy to to customize. So if you you know if you have an upcoming event, these make great little party favors for like a shower or. A, um, um, reception or party or open house whatever um, we can customize them to match their color scheme you can choose your scent I can turn around pretty quickly too these aren't like soap that need those extra days to cure and stuff so you know depending on how many you needed we can turn them around in probably three or four max three or four days so um, something to consider so uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to leave them. I'll um, check those out and get back to you as soon as I can. And thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoyed this edition.